Holy authorities. I was starting to see what she was selling there for a second, but then she mentioned that she saw the body and didn't identify it. It kind of Is she the one who also saw Whitey in town? Yes, that's what she said. This is a word of mouth story here. However, Debbie Davis also was found in the same hospital. There's similarity there, but it's like I said, the hands were cut off, the feet, feet removed. There's still hair taken to mask the identity of someone. Whitey Bulger does fit the description of a professional that I was discussing earlier, that fits it into an amateur story or perhaps even a crime of passion. Yeah. I don't know enough about him to really peg him for this, uh, but I guess all we really need to know is that he was a vicious murderer. True. So that's why in addition of your theorizing that he may have murdered somebody else, in addition to that matter. Our third theory is that serial killer Alan Clark is currently serving 70 years in prison for death and the murder of two women who were responsible for the murder. This theory was first presented by Alan Clark. Speaking with journalist and former police officer Alex Wilkinson, Clark claimed that while staying with his grandfather on Cape Cod in 1974, he lured a woman into his rooms, where he struck her in the head with a surf cast in addition to it. He claimed he then retrieved a saw from his truck and removed her hands, using some of her fingers as fishing hooks and burying the hands elsewhere. Casting doubt on Clark's claim is the fact that the details he provided about the murder were featured in newspaper articles. Clark also has a history of any involvement in other murders that he could have done. Bullshit. What a liar. Yeah. yeah don't, don't even give him the satisfaction. Nah. He can give me the Yeah. yeah with a swipe around. Go to hell, dude. Our final theory, though, that the lady of the dunes was herself a killer. The fact that her hands were removed could suggest that the murderer knew the victim's fingerprints would be on file somewhere. This led authorities to suspect the lady to be Lori Jean Kessinger. Kessinger had a criminal history of bank robberies and attempting to shoot police, including once in a hospital with the officer's own gun. When the Lady of the Dunes was discovered, Kessinger had recently escaped from Plymouth County Jail, just across Cape Cod Bay from Provincetown. While awaiting trial, someone was able to get Kessinger a hacksaw blade, which she used to free herself. In classic escapee fashion, she used tethered bed sheets to let the house out of a window and was met by a car that drove her away. I'm a guard at the prison. I'm supposed to be making sure nobody gets in. I'm up there in the uh, little tower. I swing the sign up a little bit more. See a woman on the side of the building. I thought they were sounding the alarm. And then suddenly, I put her down. I'm so fucked with this lady. Is she a monster? Is she is she bad? Right. She did attempt to shoot a police officer with her own gun. Who would do it? Not oh. that. That's what you're gonna do. I'm, but I'm so charmed by her savviness. She just tied bed sheets together. That's like it's some fairy cool. tale shit. That's not even Most creative. People, and, and it worked. Most people would probably scoff at that and say, well, that's only in cartoons. Nobody does this. Yeah, but I think if you're sitting around in a locked cell long enough, you'll think of anything. Yeah, and you ought to. I mean, assuming you're a cool lady like this. What do you think she just robbed some bank? And it's a dollar. Well, the cop was, you know, probably being mean to her. It's said the sculptural bust made of the Lady of the Dunes after the 1980 exhumation had a striking resemblance to Kessinger. In the late 90s, authorities tracked down Kessinger's mother, who agreed to give a saliva sample to see if her DNA meant she was the mother of the victim. The theory was so strong that it's what led to the body being exhumed again in 2000. Both tests failed in determining whether it was a match, which led to another test in 2002 that proved conclusively that there was no match between Kessinger and the Lady of the Dunes. What, but did she just disappear then? Yeah, I think so. So she may be, I mean, that's mission accomplished for someone who escaped the prison. You know? Yeah, she may be watching this video and hearing you laugh at crazy. This is the first theory that we've had that has a guess about half an hour. If yeah. you escape prison, the goal is to not be caught. Yeah. And if we found out the Lady of the Dunes was her, she got caught. Yeah, if you're yeah. watching this episode, don't be too hard. That is so cool. Then the law is going to remember, like, oh, yeah. She escaped. Yeah, they're going to be going after her for this. This case has been closely followed in the more than 35 years since Michael Metcalf discovered the Lady of the Dunes, resulting in numerous other theories with varying degrees of plausibility. In the 1980s, a psychic told Provincetown Police Chief Jimmy Meeks that the victim was a Canadian nurse named either Caroline or Marilyn O'Leary. 
while the word of a psychic may not seem like enough to merit further scrutiny. Another person has also reported the victim to be an American nurse named Carolyn O'Leary, who had gone missing. Upon investigation, authorities found O'Leary to be very much alive. The dust on this sort of track. What do you think about that investigative technique? I don't think all psychics are both just But I will say that there has to be at least one case where a psychic is actually solved. Otherwise, why would we keep using them? No one's using them. I think they're just like, you must believe me, and then some dipshit at the station is like, I think you can do this really well. Despite over four decades of dead ends, investigations continue. According to journalist Mary Ann Brand, after three exhumations, authorities currently have the skull, ribs, left scapula, the right scapula, a tissue sample of a leg, and a hair sample in their possession. Case officials are looking into a new method for identifying the body using DNA evidence and genealogy. DAs from California who worked on the Golden State Killer case, which was finally solved using genealogy methods, have been brought over to look into the case. There's even a Twitter account dedicated to discovering the identity of related disease. Still, an answer is anything but guaranteed. Prior to his death in 2011, Police Chief Meade stated that the only way to stop the case would be if someone on their deathbed wanted to clear their conscience of what happened. Without him, it appeared the identity of the lady of the doom and one of her murderers would remain. Founding, 
Altamira was forced out of the mission by a rebellion of the native people due to his terrible mistreatment. This guy is just laughably yeah. bad at he his job. He kind of sucks, and we may run into him. I hope so. I'll make fun of him. Good. I may join you for once, because he was kind of an asshole. And to make the long, violent, and tragic history of the Franciscan mission system very short, the Spanish colonizers forced indigenous peoples into what some have described as a form of slavery, with diseases and mistreatment leading to the deaths of thousands, while systematically attempting to annihilate their cultures. The death toll at Mission Solano is said to be nearly 900 lives. That's now, a bad record. Remember that it was 1,300 that they baptized. It's a bad mission. It's a bad mission. And uh, unfortunately, and most of the buildings we go to are bad places. According to Patricia Polinan, president of the Sonoma Valley Historical Society, it's inferred that the bodies of those who perished were said to have been buried adjacent to the mission church. Quote, since there were two churches at different times, it has been assumed that there were two cemeteries. End quote. One local history buff, a dentist named Dr. Peter Meyerhoff, has cited historical maps of the mission that would place a graveyard under Sonoma Plaza, which is several hundred yards from the mission. Okay, I'm not laughing about that. Great. What I'm laughing about is being at the dentist and having your dentist <laughs> with his tools in your mouth saying, you know, there's a lot of scrapes around here, don't you? Let's see what happens. <laughs> you still have a creep. Your dad is. He is a dentist. He doesn't have maps of mission and cross-referencing them by, like, putting lights into them, like, making He's just going cabin. He's just going cabin, yeah. Drilling. He's going to drill cabin. Maybe cutting the head off. That's the worst he's done. So, as I said to you, when this was a mission, there was an unfortunate amount of deaths here. Yeah. And they didn't, they didn't really bury them, I would say, properly. They buried them in unidentified mass graves, so you could just see names here. And we're standing over where the grave may have been. It was said to be next to the church back in the day, and the chapel's right here, so a lot of names. It is a lot of names. Pretty sad. Yeah. But if, as you say, for a normal activity does follow tragedy, even just standing here, I would feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, that's plenty. that's plenty. One particularly active area of the mission is a part of the building that staff members call the priest's quarters. Not because priests actually stayed here, but because the apparition of a priest is frequently seen walking around. Who this priest is, nobody knows. But some believe it may be the spirit of the diabolical Father Altamir. Anybody in here? Padre? Padre Altamira? Padre Esta? You're coming in peace. Hermanos Fantasma. Hermanos Fantasmos? Is that it? Stupid, but just. Yes. Yeah. This will continue, so? That's why I'm weird at the house. Hola! 